plugin of the week is the SoftTube TubeTech Classic Channel. The uh, SoftTube uh, TubeTech Classic Channel channel is an emulation of uh, the company TubeTech, which in the mid '80s came out with a series of passive EQs and a um, an optical compressor that have been packaged together in uh, a unit with, like a channel strip. And so what you see here is on the top is the uh, TubeTech PE PE1C, which is uh, very reminiscent. In fact, it's meant to be a replica of the EQP one a you have the um, ME1B, uh, which is uh, like the MEQ5, okay, and it's identical in its design, passive EQ. And then you have um, an optical uh, compressor limiter. And this is a completely independent thing. This wasn't meant to emulate anything. So um, if you're familiar with the Poltec gear, Poltec is famous in the 1950s 50s for creating uh, some passive EQs with some very unique shapes. Um, they have transformers and tubes at the input and output stages. And the way generally passive EQs work is that uh, there's actually no power for the equalization. In other words, there's no amplification um, for the equalization. It works on a series of filters that cut low and high frequencies away in order to give the perception of gain. So in other words, if you if you had like some sort of a simple design is if you split a signal sort of four ways, and each of those four signals, if you filtered off low and high frequencies around one of those bands, you would get the perception of there being more mid-range, okay? Even though there's not, what you've done is you've taken away high and, and lower frequencies. But because they still exist in the other three copies, essentially what you're getting is the perception that there's more of something. And this is, that's, this is not the, the exact technical design, okay? That's the basic idea. And if you think of it from that perspective, what happens is you get this incredibly crystal clear open sound that is the classic um, thing from the Poltex. And so because Poltex went out of production many, many years ago, um, this uh, company, uh, TubeTech, uh, started creating these passive EQs, and um, they kind of really, really hit the market heavy because it's Poltex were really hard to find and maintain, and the components they just end up, you know, over the long term they're going to deteriorate. They're going to get harder to repair. Replacement parts are going to be harder to get and source out, and all of those sorts of things. So when TubeTech came out with this, and they still make them. Um, they were really incredibly popular because it was a great replacement. And while you can't say that they sound identical to it, it has an incredibly clear open sound that's very, very, very reminiscent of the Poltex and designed to be exactly like them. So um, my, my issue maybe with making things exact is like, well, exact to which one? Because every one of the Poltex is going to sound different. They don't all manufacture exactly the same, okay? Um, but this is an excellent, excellent company. And SoftTube went about the process and working directly with TubeTech to make these emulations, to make this kind of all happen. So if we do a quick um, just overview through it. The way that it works is that you have the three processors. So you have a high and low frequency EQ, a mid-range EQ, and a compressor. And you can place any of these in and out of circuit. You can also decide whether you want the EQ to be, uh, the compressor to be before the EQ or after the EQ. Okay, so, uh, or this is EQ before compressor and this is EQ, uh, compressor before EQ. Okay, so you, you figure out uh, which way that you want that to go in. Um, and, uh, and then you have the in and out switches and you could also click on the little lights here, which actually turn them on and off. Okay, so it's, it's, this looks exactly like um, what the actual tube techs um, look like if you ever had one. Now these are these two EQs are, are very true to the exact settings and frequencies with one exception. The, the PE1C has uh, three additional frequencies that don't exist on the original EQP. So the EQP starts at 3K um, and finishes at 16K as you see here. And what uh, TubeTech did was they added in uh, 2K, 1.5, and 1K. So you actually get lower in there. And what the way that this was designed was that um, these two EQs would be used in tandem because what happens here is this is low frequencies, 20 cycles up to 100. And then um, up on the top end, you would have on the Poltec, you know, 3K up to 16K. And in the middle, you would have uh, a peaking band that would allow you to grab, you know, um, these um, uh, mid-range frequencies in between here. So this is uh, um, going through the hundreds up to 1K another peaking band on the outside, which goes from 1.5K up to 5K. 
and then you have a dipping band, right? So the dipping band is subtractive. So you add an additive band with these two guys, subtractive band with these two guys, and, and this runs the range from 200 up to 7K. And then you have the high frequency boosting band. So you have all the mid range, low, and high frequencies, including a high frequency filter or shelf for the top. And then you have a, a compressor. So this is like an amazing mastering chain, right? Because um, passive EQs were really popular for mastering and, and that type of thing. So, and the emulation by uh, Softube is really excellent. So, um, and really true to it, it really captures the open, um, airy kind of presence that you get um, and body that you get with the tubes and the transformers. It really captures that character. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by taking out two of the elements and just putting in the um, the um, uh, PE, uh, the PE1C here just so we can kind of go through some of the settings here and just kind of check this out. So what I have is a little bit of... Well, maybe that's where I was like hearing a little bit of attenuation. It's like, okay, so now what I want to do here is I'm going to put a little body here on the low end. So what happens is it's a low shelving EQ. And when the frequency is set here, there's also an attenuation. But the attenuation actually really starts at the frequency. So if this is set to 60 cycles, then the boost will start boosting slightly below it, and the attenuation will start at 60 cycles. So what it does is, in the frequency spectrum, if I boost the low end, I'll get the low end boost, but I'll get a little bit of a dip, okay, which is created by the attenuation. So they can actually be used together. So, and this is purposeful because it allows you to shape the tonal character um, with a sort of resonance in, in the shelving, which is a really, really cool thing. So let's see if we can kind of work the shape here. So here I come adding a little bit of body onto the low end. And here I'm gonna I'm just gonna put a little bit of presence or air up on the top end. So these three bands work together here. So what we have is this boost and attenuation would work with this frequency on the low end. And then these three work together here. So if I select this frequency, I have a Q bandwidth control, right? Um, and then I have a boost here, which allows me to, to select. So this I'm gonna add a little air in here. like that 12k band here. So you really hear like the openness and clarity and I'm boosting a fair amount, you know. If I want to warm up the top end a little bit, then this is like a high frequency shelving EQ. So I can actually So this allows me to kind of keep the top end from getting a little out of hand as a little warmth. Touch of that, right? So that it helps to shape what we have going on here. Shelf and a peaking, right? So it's kind of bringing up the overall above 10k, and then you get the dip in there to make up for what's there. So if I wanted to kind of work a little bit with the mid range, then I would go to the MEQ or the uh, um, ME1B. And the way that I'll do this is um, the first thing I'm going to start with is just to kind of do like a little low mid attenuation. So I'm going to start with a little bit of a 200 here, and I'm just going to do a little bit of a dip right inside there. how that just opens up the sound right there. 
I'm not sure I want to add anything in here. If I did, maybe like a 5k thing here. hear like how musical it is like the openness it's like very airy and very like you know it it's not shifting the tonal character you know or certainly not in a negative way in a very soft pleasing kind of way so finally let's go on to the optical limiter this is really really cool this compressor um it has um three basic modes that it operates in fixed fixed and manual together and manual and this is a really really cool the fixed and manual together. So I want to kind of show you this. You have a threshold. Um, you can meter, you know, input, output, or gain reduction. So we're just going to meter the compression. You have a gain, which is a makeup gain. It, being on the left, it sort of makes you think like, oh, this is the input stage. But no, there's a threshold because some vintage compressors in particular have fixed thresholds and you bring up the input gain to set the amount that goes over. And then we also have a ratio control here, right? So it, this uh, allows us to make some adjustments here. So I'm going to go with a very light ratio, and I want to kind of do something a little bit subtle to kind of make this breathe a little bit. And I'm going to work with a sort of fast release and a slowish attack. So if I'm working in the manual mode, then, um, then the attack time ranges from about 0.5 milliseconds up to 10, I'm sorry, up to 50 milliseconds. So, um, so the attack here um, has a, a decent range, right? You don't really typically get attacks that are much longer than that. Um, and the release time works from 0.5 uh, milliseconds up to 10 milliseconds, right? Um, so this is like giving us kind of, you know, a decent amount of range that we can really get into a, a shaping, you know, kind of tonal balancing kind of thing, or we could get a little bit more to a pumping and breathing kind of thing, which is what I kind of want to get here. So let's, let's start by this and then see if we can kind of set this up a little bit. So right now this is before the EQ. And the optical is a great way of really opening up the sound or shining a light literally like on the sound. Like it's like putting polish on the sound. It has an amazing depth character. So even though it's not doing a ton. kind of opens up the presence, right, with a slow attack. So now, if I work in a fixed mode, it's going to be set with some fixed attack and release settings, a fast attack of one millisecond and a release of 50 milliseconds. And so that is more of kind of a limiting type of thing. And I don't typically like that setting. You notice that the attack and release settings gray out here. But what's kind of interesting is the fixed slash manual setting. So what this does is it gives you an attack of one millisecond, right? So you're stuck with the one millisecond attack. And then what happens is, is you get two release characteristics. One is the initial release characteristic of the peak um, uh, limiting, which is kind of what you get from that fast attack. You're grabbing onto the peak. And then the attack time all of a sudden changes its function. It's like, how long is it going to attenuate that peak before it releases to the release time that the manual release time? So it has two release times. One is like, how long is it holding on to the initial attack? And then how long is it taking to release? So as you go through more transient sections, this is going to function more. And as you go through more open sections, legato sections, this is going to function a little bit more. So this is basically the idea is like one transitioning into the other. So it sort of becomes something like a peak 
uh, limiter compressor kind of combination. And, and it's very cool. So let's check this out, see if I can kind of make this work. So you can see immediately here more gain reduction, so. more of an averaging kind of thing. So this is going to add more warmth and body into the mix. Whereas if I go to the faster release here, going to give me a more open sound. It's going to add openness, right? Take away some of the disclarity, right? So make it a little bit punchier sounding. So it's kind of a in really interesting con combination, and I kind of like this longer... I really like that kind of lighter, you know, longer, kind of more evening out adds like a great presence. So let's listen to the whole thing in and out. I can also put the compressor pre-EQ. So the, the, uh, the audio dropping out there for a second is actually someone very quickly going behind and moving all the cables. They're really fast, actually. It's kind of cool. So you hear all this like kind of um, with the compressor post um, EQ, it's kind of pulling in the reins a little bit on the EQ, right? It's it's kind of grabbing it a little bit more and I could back off of the threshold. And then this is giving me a, a brighter, more present kind of sound, right? And if I go that same section pre-EQ, in this stage, you know, you keep before the compressor. Really, really great stuff and really like a, a, a fantastic emulation of this stuff because it really captures the openness and the character and the really, 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 uh, you know, like beautiful, rich quality that you do get from the tube tech components. I mean, this stuff is like knock, knock your socks off type of stuff. Um, um, I mean, just from a personal standpoint, you're always excited to see Poltex, but you were never disappointed if you saw tube techs in a studio. So, um, and, and in particular, the, the, this tube tech compressor was a, a go-to compressor for so many vocals that I recorded and uh, so many other tracks that I laid, you know, great on bass, great on vocals, just like a monster of a compressor. So really good stuff and, and really great work by Softube on this one. I think this is, a, this, it's a real winner as a plug-in. Um, so there you have it. There is the um, Softube uh, Tube Tech Classic Channel.